Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called God Bless America. It's a comedy with witty and satire about the downward spiral of what it believes to be America. It stars Joe Murray, the brother of Bill Murray, Tara Lynn Barr, Melinda Page Hamilton, Magazine Brooks Smith, Rich McDonald, Maddie Hatson, and Larry Miller. And it's written and directed by Bobcat Goderwhite. The film opens when a lonely, miserable, and terminally ill man named Frank, played by Joe Murray, has really suffering from a downward spiral of what's really happening in the society of America. In fact, he's pretty much having a midlife crisis of his own. He started having insomnia due to all the noisy neighbors next door being so rude, especially with the crying baby at the beginning. Also the fact that he started turning on the TV and switching channels to see what's really going on in the media, such as reality shows, infomercials, commercials, political agendas, a lot of news and so on, that somehow he just couldn't really stand, especially the American Idol type of show that started to make fun of a disabled fat man who started to sing off key, sort of in the tradition of American Idol's William Hung. Remember that? Back in 2004. I never watched that show, as far as I'm concerned, but I have heard of it on the news. Go figure. But anyway, the next day he was on his way to work. He decided to call the neighbor next door to move his car, his yellow Chevy Camaro, but unfortunately he's wasting his time doing that until he finally did it. He went ahead and but then he was on his way. He called his, called his daughter of his divorced wife who just who was recently going to be married to a cop. Being a spoiled brat she is, she decided that she doesn't want to see his father. So prior to this, you know, he was looking forward to that weekend, but it didn't turn out quite as planned. And then after that, he was at work. He met a receptionist who actually has been friends with her, and they felt, felt very nice. You know, they were having a conversation with each other. But by the time he went inside of work, he just started to feel very angry and frustrated because because he despised everybody who keeps talking about all the celebrity gossip in, involving that show and everything else which that pretty much explains what's really wrong with today's society I kinda get that a lot uh, when I'm when I was at work but anyway he's starting to explain about what's going on until suddenly his boss called up and told him that that he might be considered as as a sexual harassment involving the receptionist so unfortunately he got fired from his job. Um, after that he went to the doctor because he found out that he was having severe migraine headaches so he went to his foul mouth doctor and found out um, in his computer that he is suffering a brain tumor so that's why he's feeling very terminally ill so he probably has a couple months until goodness knows what happens to him. So that night decided to watch once again one of these reality shows which turns out to be a parody of 16 and Pregnant, the MTV show and he spotted a spoiled brat started to be you know very shallow and not very nice and everything that he decided he just he's mad as hell and he cannot take it anymore so he went ahead and brought his gun and he went all the way across the country by stealing a uh, yellow Chevy Camaro and he went up to the actress and killed her that is until he was spotted by a 16 year old named Roxy a disturbed teenager who's pretty much feeling the same way that Frank is feeling in a sort of different way who's played by Tara Lane Barr so he went to a motel room um, threatening to kill himself uh, by putting his gun into his mouth until Roxy came by and 
and find out about all this until goodness knows what's going to happen. And he thought having him commit suicide was a bad idea. So they decided that they wanted to go on a killing spree across country all the way around to to kill almost everybody who was involved in this this uh, madness of of the society we're living in until a lot of things started to go wrong as no one seems to notice especially what happened in the movie theater when when those two actually shot a lot of rude audiences for for talking and and throwing everything on the screen in front of everybody and, and so on which kind of much relate to what just happened recently and so Frank finally went to Hollywood just to get to the premiere of what seems to be the finale of that American Idol type show and decided to kill everybody for, for especially the ones that were involved in the production in the, in the first place and the audience some of the audience though who made fun of him well and that's pretty much how the film ends now I really did enjoy Bobcat Goldwaite's uh, work and his stand-up comedian stuff that he does since the 80s and 90s and I really enjoy his stuff I really didn't I, I like the fact that he pokes fun of what's really going on in the society how he's going after the whole media including the the politics stuff and all these other spiritual groups so going after the people and blowing reality shows and stuff like that it just makes you feel very happy you just wish you just want to wipe them off away. Especially the celebrities we're getting nowadays, the ones with no talent. It's basically what it is, a ranting movie, but more of a killing spree type of film. It's like you just want to get rid of the people you really don't like. Like for instance, I, I don't even like Justin Timberlake as well as Britney Spears. And these two really suck balls. And also the fact that we're getting people like Justin Bieber and all these other ones. And Kim Kardashian's. Out of all people, all the Kardashians and the Lindsay Lohans of all the world, not to mention all Hillary Duff and Hannah Montana and all the Jonas Brothers. <sighs> you know, this is just, this is what's really wrong with this society today. The only problem I didn't like about, however, was at the beginning of the film, they showed a crying baby scene and he gets killed. I, I thought that was totally unnecessary to put in a comedy like this. I know they're trying to be funny, but it didn't make me laugh when it comes to that, so that needed to be edited out, in my opinion. And that that was just unnecessary. It was very cruel. I do not want to see a crying baby get killed. That's for sure. I mean, sure, people don't like hearing babies crying all the time, but but they, they shouldn't do that. It's, it's, it's just totally wrong. And then there's other scenes where I guess they kind of went over the edge too with it. Like they started to mention other uh, references, I um, mean, such as Alice Cooper and and all of that. And then they threw in Diablo Cody into the mix. I'm like, what? I mean, boy. I mean, don't get me wrong, because I love Juno and everything, but boy, did they have to throw that in into the process, especially when the character, ironically, is starting to act like Juno. Go figure. I also didn't like the fact that they added a girl in this. So I, I think this movie could have been a whole lot better if it just focused more on Frank and the fact that he's doing this alone, or maybe just have a different partner who who would have had the guts to do whatever he can. Why do they always do this in movies where once again we get to have a second banana, you know, as a girl who's just ticked off the same way that he is? But you know, for the fact that. There's going to be a lot of sexual intentions to them, especially if the girl is very young, like underage. It's just, it just doesn't work. We've seen this already with movies like Kick-Ass and Super. Now, as much as I love those films, you do kind of admit it's really getting old real fast. So that, that needs to stop. And I thought the ending was pretty disappointing. I mean, it's, it's sort of like the movie falling down where once again the main character was also ticked off of what's going on in the society we're living in once again gets killed off at the end which really pisses me off because he probably did not deserve this 
why did he have to end up? It's like all after all this stuff that he's going through, he ends up going to hell because of what happens to them. Just pisses me off, especially the fact that these guys deserve it. Yeah, they they didn't. They should have never had added that scene in the first place. That not to mention the the cop scene too. So they went ahead and threw that anyway. It was just, it was unnecessary. But other than that, though, I really actually enjoyed it for what it was. It's not the kind of films I would definitely be entertained by, but you know, prior to Bob Cat Go to Waits, I always enjoy his work, and I love his last film, World's Greatest Dad, with Robin Williams. That was a good film. This one makes it up for it. So, and I'm glad that he did a film like this, because I think we definitely need movies like this nowadays in this world today. But frankly, you know, I think he really needs to work on this. Um, in in my in my sense, I think he needs to work on some of the flaws that were in there. But other than that, though, he did a good job, and I thank him for this because I really enjoy this movie for what it is. You just want to do what any normal American would do: just wipe them all out. Go back to the way they were. Everything that's normal. Not shallow and stupid. And, this, and everything. So that's in my opinion. But I would never, of course, I would never do something like that. Because I think that would be totally you know, messed up. Especially what just happened just recently. On this year. The massive shootings of the movie theater. And of course, the Sandy Hook the elementary school shootings. And... Connecticut. This movie wasn't taking itself so seriously, and it's not trying to go in right ways or wrong. It's just basically what it is: a parody, a comedy. You wouldn't believe what what's going to happen next. It's a dark comedy, and I think it's definitely worth watching for for what it's worth. So anyway, I give God Bless America three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.